Hello, this is Dr. Dave Gatro. Um, sitting down here in the corner. And uh, this is a supplemental lecture to make up for the uh, uh, missed class on uh, Wednesday, January 23rd. We're going over file management. We're going to do several examples. And uh, play this uh, video or series of videos as many times as you think you need. Well, to review a little bit, uh, in Unix there are three types of files. There's ordinary files, there's directories, and there's special files. Um, the special files have to do with hard drives, CD drives, uh, modems, um, attached hardware devices, shortcuts, and uh, alias names. Uh, we're going to deal primarily in this class with ordinary files and directories. As far as uh, other files types, there's hidden files, and I want to give you a little demonstration. A hidden file is any file that begins with a period. It doesn't show up whenever you just do a regular list of the items in that directory. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me bring up a session I have in Unix. And I've got a little test directory that I use for this particular uh, lecture. And let me do an LS, which stands for list structures or just list contents. And you'll see that I have several files in there. Um, Ruby Yacht, Road.txt, uh, a couple of temporary directories, and some other various file names. Okay, so let me do an ls-a. Okay, the ls-a. Now you'll see a couple of other things pop up. You'll see the two periods and the double periods, and you'll also see a dot log in that. Those are hidden files. They started with periods. Um, the dot login file is just a regular file but it doesn't show up whenever you just do a regular ls. you got to do ls-a. Now, as far as the hidden files goes, there are several that you can have. There, people who have a born shell typically have a, a dot .profile. In fact, every shell has its own startup file, which uh, in corn shell it's .kshrc, in C shell it's .cshrc, uh, the T cell has tcshrc, the dot plan, which you saw beforehand, usually goes in a root directory, and it's displayed whenever someone does a finger on you or tries to find your projects the same way. The dot forward file, and I'll show you what mine looks like here. I'll go back up to, well, I'll just say more dot not slash dot forward, and you'll see that um, I, I, I went up a directory. My uh, email that's sent to gatrosd at cs.fsu.edu, I don't read it using Pine, and if you don't read it using Pine, you want it to go someplace where you do read it. Mine's going to a Microsoft Exchange server, um, and then the, the pound sign slash is the username that it's actually going to go to. So that's what's in the dot .forward file. It's a forwarding of where you want your mail to go. Uh, there, most people have a profile if you have an SH or KSH. KSH, uh, you have a log out. The period and the double period, two specialized files, I want you to know what they're for, and they're in every directory. And let me do ls-a, and you'll see them right there. There's the period, and there's the double period. The single period, that's actually a file that contains the location of the current directory, the one that we're in right now. The double period is the parent of this directory, which is one up. So if I say cd dot dot, what it's going to do is it's going to go up a directory, and I do that, and that's my that's my root directory. Okay, so I'll go temp. Get back in here. Clear. All right. And then you can also have a list of aliases. Okay. Now commands. Usually a command has. Uh, three things in them, or up to three things in them. There's the command itself, which usually consists of uh, two, uh, two or more letters, lowercase letters usually, uh, that indicate the command, followed by a series of flags. The flags are almost always preceded with a dash to indicate that they are flags, and then there's parameters. Most of the time the parameters are actually a directory path name or a file name. We're going to use in this example the ls command, which we'll go over in a little bit. And uh, let me just kind of show you the different options. Go back into Tech T again. <coughs> so I do ls, okay, and if I want to see all the files, uh, dash a, okay. If I only want to see the files that end in dot dat, I can do ls dash a asterisk dot dat. And you can see there's a, so there's an example of the command, the flags, and then the path or the, the uh, parameters. Um, I can add more flags to it. For instance, dash L is a long listing. 
gives you complete information. And I can combine them. I can either say dash a l. I can do da. I can reverse them, or I can combine them with the parameter that says I only want to see the dot dat files. I can also separate them. I can say dash a and then dash dash l asterisk dot dat, and you'll see that that works quite nicely too. Try those. Give those a, give those a try. Okay. Again, the parameters. Here's a copy statement, which we'll go over in a little bit. Uh, the copy needs two parameters. There are some flags you can put in here too, but a copy needs a source and a destination, and it always <coughs> excuse me needs a source and a destination. Even if the destination you want it the same name, you have to tell it the directory of where you want it to go, even if it's the current directory. Uh, let's see. So here's the command. Okay. Um, and I'm going to uh, go over these. These are the most common. The dash A, which we saw, is to include all hidden files. The dash uppercase A is to include all the hidden files except for the, the current and the previous directory. I'll show you what that looks like. Let me clear here. And notice the dash A shows them all up. The dash uppercase A, notice that the, the period and the double period are, are actually missing. Uh, you can list entries by column. Uh, the directory listing, that's kind of interesting. I'd like you to know how to do that. If I want to see the directories that are here, it would be temp directory 1 and temp directory 2. I have to do an ls-d. But just doing this, if I do that, it just says up the period. Okay, well that's the current directory. You notice it shows the period. Okay. Uh, I want to see all the subdirectories that are in here, which I have to do this, dash d, asterisk, slash. The asterisk says, show me all of them in this directory. And notice the slash says, uh, that's kind of saying before, uh, below this directory right here. And I do that and I see the temp directory 1, temp directory 2. And again, I can add other options to this. I can say uh, A for hidden. It's, there's no hidden directories. And I can put the L in there. Say, give me all the information. Okay. Okay. Um, the lowercase l recursive lists all subdirectories. Uh, the information in there too. Let me show you what that looks like. And I'll just uh, dash uh, dash r, and you'll see that it, it shows. There's nothing in temp directory one and temp directory two, but it showed the contents of them. And uh, the other useful one is the dash one. Okay, clear here and ls dash one shows one per line, which is very handy if you're trying to feed this to um, another command. I don't have this uh, uh, command listed, or the version of a command listed, but this is ls, and you'll notice that uh, um, uh, whenever I do an ls, the colors show up. And on some systems, that's not always the case. So this kind of says this is a the green one of regular files, uh, Ruby Yacht, uh, has been edited. Let me go in and I'll show you what happens. I'll go in and edit. I'll use Pico, which we'll learn later on in the course. Pico, I said, uh, I'll just add the title the Road by Robert Frost. Okay, I'll save it. I'll clear, and you'll see that uh, uh, the road shows up. Uh, it's a green, just like Ruby Yacht. Let me go on Pico, uh, Ruby Yacht, RubyYacht.com. It's a much longer uh, uh, file. Okay. okay. Clear. All right. Uh, so, but I can turn that off. I can say ls uh, dash uh, color equal uh, never. And you'll see that now the colors show up. Okay, and I can always turn that back on, or not turn it back on. It's always on, depending on the setting. Is I can either say uh, always or auto is another one I can say, and you'll see the colors uh, show up here too. Pretty handy. Okay. Uh, now then, let's go into an explanation of, of what all the numbers mean on the uh, ls command. Uh, so. Um, 
dash L. All right, so here's our um, system, and you'll notice over to the left-hand side we see a lot of dashes R, W, X, and R's. Uh, on a Unix system, okay, you have the user, which is uh, the owner, and I'm just typing text just to kind of represent. You have the um, the second group of letters, which is the group, um, <coughs> what you belong to, and then the third is the world. Or everyone else, or or uh, uh, other is kind of like saying. So there's three groups of letters, and each person can read, write, or execute. Those are the three options. Well, now let's look up here. We see that anything that begins with a D is a directory. See that letter right there, a D? That means that these two are directories. The first three groups are for the owner. Myself, in this case, is Gatros. I can read, write, and execute that file. The second set of three is for the uh, group. Anybody that in group, which includes CS faculty, can read and execute that file and then the world can read and execute that file. This file is the uh, uh, owner, this is the group that it belongs to, this is the size, and this is either when it was last created or when it was at last accessed. And You can see that the two files down here were accessed on January 22nd at uh, about 9.30 in the morning. Okay. So that's an explanation of, uh, of those. <clears throat> okay. The second column uh, represents the number of memory blocks taken by the file, which isn't a lot. It's usually one. It's, it's a whole number, um, and uh, it's not usually significant. Okay. Now, uh, let's go over uh, uh, a few other commands. The last one I want to do in this particular case is man. If you have uh, uh, need help on something, you type man and say ls, and it shows a, a listing of uh, commands. So in the space bar, and then if any time you're done, you can say q for quit, and then clear, and that's it. All right. Well, that's part one of uh, the Unix lecture, the makeup lecture, which uh, we've already done in class, but uh, it's just a good idea to kind of review it. So play this as many times as you want. Go in and practice these commands, please. All right, on to the next one.